Hey, welcome back to the Mindy Paul Show. I hope you are having an awesome, awesome day and you're really implementing some of the stuff that I'm telling you to do on these podcasts, right? Because otherwise, there's no point in listening to a podcast if you ain't going to do fuck all with it. Don't waste your time, all right? So today I want to talk about something that's um, spoken about by a lot of people. A lot of people understand what I'm about to speak about. People probably don't understand what I'm speaking about anyway, but that's all cool, <laughs> right? So today I want to talk about self-sabotage. You know, what? what is what is self-sabotage? What the fuck does it even mean? Have you ever wondered what that means? Have you ever told yourself that, you know, I'm sabotaging my success? Uh, you see someone who's doing great in business and all of a sudden it's going so it's going great all of a sudden and they get to a certain point and everything just crumbles down. And then they tell themselves, I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was too good to be true. You ever, maybe that's happened to you. I used to do this all the fucking time. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd start making a bit of money and something's going really great. And all of a sudden, crash, bang, wallop. The income starts to drop. And I'm more or less at what I've always been at. And then I tell myself, you know what? I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. How many times have you told yourself that I knew this was going to happen? Or how many times have you heard somebody else saying, I knew it's too good to be true? If it's too good to be true, it probably is. You probably heard that one too, right? So why is that? I've seen this happen so many times when people have breakthroughs. Now, people start having breakthroughs and what happens is they'll start to make um, erratic decisions. They'll start to do something crazy, something um, out of their normal character. They'll start to, they call it self-sabotage. They'll start to like throw away their success, make bad decisions and do some crazy things stop what's working for them so why does that happen do you think it's intentional do you actually people do you actually think that people intentionally self-sabotage and this happens not just in money i want about relationships right relationships you think about in all relationships money it happens over and over again they'll self-sabotage self-sabotage themselves and and they put it down to maybe it's my self-worth maybe i don't believe i'm worth it Maybe I'm not meant to be happy. Maybe God doesn't want me to be happy. Maybe this is about karma, something done in my past life. Maybe it's because I didn't let the old lady out in traffic in a fiesta and I just pulled out in front of her. Maybe it's because that I've lost half a million. Maybe God's watching me and thinking, no, you don't deserve to win. Everybody deserves to win. Everybody deserves to win. Everybody deserves to be abundant. Now, if you think about this, whether you believe in God or the universe, you know, we weren't put on this earth to suffer. We weren't here to suffer, right? To be mediocre and, and experience like unhappiness and averageness. Is that even a word, averageness? I hope we get that in the captions, averageness, right? Are, are we are we doing that? Why does that happen? I'll tell you why that happens. Why people self-sabotage is because we have what I call a GPS of ourselves, right? We have an idea, a concept of who we are. Like, as soon as we see our money start to go up, this this GPS that we have, this firm, I call it financial firm, so I call it lots of different things, but we have a, a GPS, right? Like, say if you're earning like 5,000 bucks a month and you've been earning 5,000 bucks for a month for the past two and a half, three years, all right? So that means that your GPS is programmed for you to earn 5,000 bucks. And regardless of how hard you work, how many strategies you implement, um, you know, um, how much money you spend on marketing and all that kind of stuff, you still can't seem to break past that level of income. And, you know, you try to work longer hours. You try to maybe extend the hours of your business. And you do all sorts of stuff, but nothing changes. And when it does change, it goes up, right? Then you do something. Maybe you made a decision. Maybe you got drunk and said something stupid to somebody. Maybe you went on live and went to some strip club and showed your true colors, right? And you said to yourself, you know what? It was that. I self-sabotage. It's too. It's going too good. It's too good to be true. No, I'll tell you what that was. That was that your new, your new lifestyle wasn't in harmony, didn't match what your GPS was saying. So what your GPS's job is to do is to bring you back down to what you're programmed for. I want you to think about that. I'm going to pause, think. So you have a GPS code. It's got a pre-programmed program in there. And soon as, without you adjusting your GPS code, right, without you adjusting your identity, the concept that you have of yourself, Something happens on the outside and it brings your income back down, right? And you blame, you blame people, you blame yourself, you blame whether you deserve it or not, whether you're a good person or, or karma and all that kind of stuff. You blame other things. Don't blame that. It's got nothing to do with anything else apart from the fact that you haven't adjusted your own financial thermostat, your own belief systems around yourself. 
I want you to think about it. Is this making sense? You're probably sitting there nodding. Yeah, I kind of get this now. Think about someone that you know that was doing really well. And then it went bang, down, crashed down. And then you see them again in another business. They do the same thing. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Maybe you reach a certain level of success and then you hit rock bottom, you lose everything and there's a pattern. Think about that. And this happens in relationships too. Like people like, you, you, you find someone that's been married seven fucking times. I mean, why do you need to be married seven times? Why get married the seventh time if the sixth one didn't work out? Again, that's a part of the identity they have them as themselves in a relationship. And because they don't have good beliefs about themselves, about relationships and all that sort of stuff. So think about that. How does that happen? Then it's self-sabotage. Oh, you know what? They get someone that treats them really well and all of a sudden they start being horrible to them. You know what? Oh, why did I treat her like this? Why did I treat them like this? They were such a good person. It's because your identity of how you're programmed. That's how you treat your business, how you treat money. So it's really important. I really want you to get this. It's an identity crisis. That's what we have. You know, self-sabotage. You don't self-sabotage yourself. It's, it's your belief system that's in control of you. It's that GPS that's wired that way. Now, unless we change the wiring there, nothing's going to change. It's like a thermostat, okay? You can't change the room temperature right, right here now, right? Without me going up to the thermostat, wherever it is, I have to find it first of all, and then adjusting it. That's the only way this room will get colder or warmer. And that's the only way that your income is going to go higher, okay? If you adjust it. So I want you to think about it. There's no such thing. Understand this from today onwards. Never use that term about self-sabotage because it's just it's just something that somebody made up a word to describe something they couldn't describe or understand when they hit rock bottom and it kept on happening and happening. I said, well, I'm just self-sabotaging, self-detonating. You ain't a bomb. OK, so think about that. You don't just self-sabotage yourself. It's something in control of you. It's like your 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 your, your strings are being pulled. I understand this now, but before looking back, when I was grinding away, hustling, I even hate that word hustling, you know, grinding away different businesses, trying to make things happen. I would go from one industry to the other, to the other, to the other. Now, maybe you see someone who's doing great in a certain industry. Maybe you've done this before and you, you say, all right, let me go see what Tracy's doing. You know what? She's, she's making some money doing what she's doing. Let me get into that industry. You get into that industry. Guess what? Nothing changes. So people try to change the industry, the business they're in. But unless you're going to change yourself, the industry is not really going to make much of a difference because you're programmed, right? You're controlled. You're, you have a control panel and you've got to adjust that. So next time you start to win, you're starting to see results, okay? And you're tempted to stop doing what's working for you. Ask yourself a question. Is this self-sabotage? Or maybe it's my old identity taken back. I've seen this so many times. I've had this where, where I've had clients They've come to me and they've really started to win and start to make money, start to make more sales, right? Really, they see their income starting to shoot up, things are starting to happen and they're getting adjusted to that. And then all of a sudden they think, you know what? There's something that tells them stop the coaching. You know, there's a reason, oh, don't do that. You know, something, whatever it was, they'll have a reason to knock them off course and they give in to their old belief systems, to their old identity. And I've, I've, I've seen this happen many times, many times. And if that happens to you, you know, you've got to ask yourself, like, fucking hell, be aware of it. You've got to be aware, like, what's, what's happening? You could be getting fit in the gym, okay? You could be getting yourself back into shape. You know, you tell yourself that you want to get down to, like, 120 pounds. You want to have a six-pack abs or whatever. And all of a sudden, you start doing amazing. You start to lose weight. You start to gain muscle. You know, you're looking really good. People are complimenting you. Uh, you got You change your diet plan and everything. And all of a sudden... You might see somebody else, right? It might not even be you. You might see someone else. You know, three months later, four months later, you can't even recognize them because their face is so puffed up and they've put on so much weight and you're like, what the fuck happened? And they will give you some other reason why something happened. They, it won't be the truth because they don't know what really happened. The truth is that they didn't fix their identity, okay? And that's what happened. They fell off, fell off the, fell off the wagon. So, in fact, I might send this podcast to some people, maybe that worked me in the past, where you're starting to shoot up their income. And then what happened? Self-sabotage kicked in. Another reason, another excuse. It's going to show up in 101 million different ways um, what happens and how it happens. So I want you to really be aware that when something good is going, unconsciously you might be thinking, you know what, this is too good to be true. Something's going to happen, something's going to happen, something's going to happen. And guess what happens? Yep, something happens because you believed 
something was going to happen. You kept on affirming it to yourself over and over again. So what happened? The universe said, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to make it happen to you. I'm going to make it happen to you. You know, so again, you know, whatever you fear, the, dom the most dominant thing in your mind is what's going to materialize, what's going to manifest. So if, you, if you're so focused on losing, you're going to lose money, you're going to lose money, you're going to lose it all, you're going to lose it all. Unless you change that, you will end up losing it. This, is, this happens. Lottery winners is a great one, right? Remember back in the UK, we had Michael Carroll, the bin man, the famous bin man. He made like, I think he won about 36 mil. The guy lost it all. For, how the fuck can you lose 36 million? The guy was like doing banger racing in his back garden and had all sorts of crazy stuff. He might even reach out to me now on Insta. Can you help me, please? Yeah, Michael, listen, if you're listening, or well, maybe someone share it with him. I might help him get him on a podcast, you know? And um, yeah, and he lost the money. Why was that? Because he had that identity of his. You know, people say, oh, you self-sabotage. The success got to his head. The success can't get to your fucking head. Come on. How can success get to your head? Success gets to your unconscious mind because your unconscious mind isn't successful. Unless you become successful subconsciously, your results will dip back down. Success can never get to your head, right? It can never. It gets to your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind hasn't accepted the idea that you're wealthy. And all of a sudden, you start to make some different decisions. Your subconscious mind will start to play on you and, you, and you'll start to drop off. It's fucking crazy. Look at how many lottery winners out there lose their money. Look at how many people that you know, their income goes up and down, up and down. One minute they got a new car, then they're in a banger. Then they got a new car, then they're in a banger. Why does it happen? No, it's not self-sabotage. It's your own GPS. It's your identity, your self-image that you have of yourself. So I hope this has made some sense to you in terms of your results. Look around you. Observe people. You you know, I get to understand what people really like by having a conversation with them. Words are powerful. You know, suggestion is so powerful. I get to, I can speak to somebody for like five minutes, even less than that. And I know exactly I can t probably tell you how much money they're going to earn a month, wh where they're at and what they've got to do, why they are where they are. Because I've been around this so, so long, I really understand it because I've been there when I wasn't making any money. And I understand now why I went like nearly 20 years at the same income level. How You know, you'd probably say you've got to be a dumb fuck to be at the same income level for 20 years. It's got nothing to be about dumb or smart. I can barely spell. I ain't a smart dude, but I understand how this stuff works. That's why I'm winning in a big, big way. So that's another thing, right? If you think, well, I'm not smart enough. You don't need to be smart. You find people around you that have got the skills that you need. I can't even operate a camera. I brought a Sony ZV-1, all these features and stuff. I remember when I went to the shop to buy it, and I was like, tell me about the features. And even when I was asking about the features, I knew I weren't going to use none of them features. I could barely turn the thing on. I'm like, tell me, what about this? What does this button do? What's that do? He told me what it does. Do I remember what it does? Do I care what it does? No. Because it's not in my, it's not, it's not my makeup, is it? So anyway, listen, I hope you found this um, podcast valuable. So I will see you on the next one. Take care.